doing the back scale, same as the front. And I actually will tool a year. Mm -hmm. Really? I burn up a Dremel tool once a year. Once a year. That's a lot of knife making. Or repairing, I should say. like this. I've got plenty of this money. If I had like pearl or a piece of stag that's more expensive, something like that, you, know, you don't want to just hit it hard. And just, you, know, you can crack it. And I'm going to smack my second pin. And then I'm going to pin this one. And what I do when I pin these, I don't lay it completely flat. Because you don't want to pin it all here and not have anything in that scale on the outside to pin over. I just hold it up just a little bit off the layer. to the knife and now I'm going to take off the corners and it'll be flush with bolsters again like I did on the front. Okay, now this back scale has been done. Now that I've got both scales done, now I'm going to drill my center pin hole. I'll select the drill bit. That would be the size. We'll go through the spring. Oh, 
trying to keep your skins laying flat. You don't want it to be laying this way and your drill bit go in because it's going to throw everything off. You have, you have to have it flat and drill straight down. putting this knife back together. Like any pins, pivot pins or center pins, you want them to where you can just get them through. Even if you gotta force them a little bit because you don't want any slop in your center pins because threads are going to slop in the springs. You want them tight. But I'm gonna cut this off. Okay, now you've got your knife apart. Some blades are looking dirty. You might as well clean them up while you've got them out. Very cool. silver pin stock which I have rolls of and I'm going to flatten me out a piece here then if I need to I'll size it down because it's not going to fit my pin stock is 3.30 seconds and then I custom fit it water handy when you're grinding or anything and when you keep it cooled off it won't burn you. Okay, pin, just like the center pin, it's just where you can push it through with a little force because you don't want any slop or play. Center for carrying your pivot pin. Now, this is the trick of how I put springs in. A lot of people have a little device that will shove the springs in, you can just put them in, pop the pin in. This is what I do. This is why I don't swell my center pin yet. I just shove it down into the knife. As it goes on, like so in my center pin, just letting the knife spread apart. Then what I do, I line my holes up. Push them through. Now I'm, my blades are pinned. Okay, now how are we going to get these blades back on the springs? A lot of times, you can just grab them good and twist them right back on. We'll do the same with this one. I just push towards the knife and twist. 
and we're back in. So now, I've got my pins and my blade. I'm going to go ahead and trim this. Okay, now I'm going to paint the pen for the blade. Some people will use a spacer, they'll use a filler gauge. Sometimes I use a piece of brass. But here anymore, I like to do it by the field. And if I get them tight, I can adjust them. Hit them around the edges too, that way you roll that pin and you don't leave a gap. Sometimes pins will not hide. Okay, now I'm gonna try it here. And we've got snap. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take these pins and grind them flush. flush so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim my center pin and then I'll paint it. Okay now I've got it trimmed and I'm going to paint my center pin. Now you don't want to hit these too hard because you went through all this work of putting these scales on putting it all back together and you get it hard to crack. Beep! Go to curse mode. So we just want to lightly Flush these off a little bit. Nice back together. We can do some final checks if there's anything else you feel that that might need. And there's a little spot right here. Looks like it might still be a little, little, little sharp. Hey guys, thanks for watching part number three of Gary restoring the 1930s Klaus. Did you pick up on the tips on how he uses super glue to hold the scale in place while he drills and the way he gets his blades back on the springs? It's really great stuff. I suggest going back and watching one, two, and three as number four will be out in just a few days. And if you like, you can join us on Facebook at Free Range Automatic Outlaws or you can join Gary's group, Vintage Pocket Knives Free 1970 or just join both. We also have a website. It's called freakknives.com. That's F-R-E-A-K-N-I-V-E-S.com. Comment below on any videos you'd like to see in the future or any questions you may have. Like and subscribe to be the first to see new content as we wrap up the Klaus and open the door to our next adventure. And as always, stay tuned and stay sharp.